And producer Scott picks a great song here. I love that there. Hey, it's Cheryl Garlock with Colorado Front Range Properties. And thank you so much for joining in to the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. You guys, you know, I, I sell residential real estate, right? Okay, I'm really pretty passionate about it. Gosh, you have to be if you've been in this business for 34 years. Wow, gosh. But anyway, you guys, I am really passionate also about planning for retirement. I think that's because I'm already not really there, but I see the writing on the wall, so to speak. So, Scott, have you thought about uh, planning for retirement? You're a young dude, though. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I read an article not too very long ago here that was talking about, actually, where did this come? Uh, this was also out of the Gazette here just, I think, last week here, and it was talking about our golden years may not be so golden after all. You know, I was talking earlier here about how to check out your Social Security, and a lot of people just kind of go file that at whatever age they think that they can, and they don't give a whole lot of thought about planning for it, and that's really what they want you to do with that. But you really need to do that, again, really with our retirement. Here's some stuff that I think uh, I'd like to share with you guys. In this article, they were talking about a 63-year-old uh, man they had interviewed had been unable to build up his nest egg for himself and his wife with his modest salary at a nonprofit that he's been working at for many years. He had a little saved up in a 401k from the past decade after spending most of his working life as a self-employed individual and you know with the economy being what it has been we've had a lot of people who have lost their jobs didn't find new jobs and ultimately have created their own businesses and that's an excellent thing to be able to go ahead and do but you know what happens is, is we usually fork most of our money back into our businesses and we live more or less sometimes day to day or month to month and it leaves little money or options for planning for retirement but you know the new trend uh, for a lot of planners, financial planners, and advising younger people to save for the future, it used to be, okay, how are you going to pay for your kid's college? Focus on your kid's college, 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 right? They're actually really switching the bait now here and saying you better first focus on your retirement and then your kid's college. You know, because what is your real job is to get your kid up through school, the 12th grade. And if you can help them go to college, great. But you don't want to be a burden to them. You know, at least most of us don't want to down, you know, down the road when you're older. So that really, you know, you got to plan. So. Yes. <laughs> I, actually, that's sort of funny. You should say that. I always tease my nephew, who's really tall, really tall. I said, I want to be your NBA basketball agent. Of course, wouldn't you know, he can't stay in basketball. What, what can I say, right? So anyway, uh, but here's what this article goes on to say about retirement here. And I think this is really important. It says, with traditional pensions becoming rare in the private sector and lower paid workers less likely to have access to an employer provided retirement plan, there's a growing gulf in the retirement savings of the wealthy and people with lower incomes. That's most of us, the lower incomes and the wealthy. You guys got to know that. The experts say uh, could exacerbate an already widening wealth gap across America as more than 70 million baby boomers head into retirement, many of them with skimpy, skimpy reserves. That is really, really, really true. And you know, we know that Americans definitely want to plan and want to uh, save for retirement here, but the trick is how are they going to do it? How are they going to do it? Now, I get a big kick out of this because I always get these ads or see these things from the major stock uh, brokerage firms there about you know how they can invest your money and how much money it takes really for you to uh, you know live on there that kind of a thing there go to some of those websites you know the Fidelity sites the Schwab sites and all, any of the other ones and do their retirement calculators you actually do owe it yourself to do that anyway so investing in, for your retirement and planning for your retirement that is certainly one option there's only one problem you gotta have a big nest egg to begin with so that's kind of a hard thing. Like I think I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head here, but uh, if you have um, a $75,000 a year uh, job and lifestyle, let's put it that way, in order to maintain that, you need it about, if you're 45 and you already have maybe, I don't know, 80,000 already stashed, you know, in your 401, you were gonna need about, I think it was like 1.7 million. Well, that's not real likely to happen to any of us folks. So what is another option? Yes, you do know I have the perfect answer. And it's true. It is through real estate. 
And I got to tell you that right now, right now, while the interest rates are as low as they are, whether you be a home buyer or an investor, this is the time to pick these deals up. You know, the anticipation is, is that we're going to have a continually strong, high rental economy here. A lot of people kind of coming and going and a lot of people needing to rent for a lot of reasons. A lot of bad credit, foreclosures, those kinds of things there. So right now, if you're an investor, you have the opportunity to buy an investment property. You really, really should. And uh, you can buy a single family, a condo, or a townhome. My particular favorite, though, is an income-producing property. Why? Because I'm looking for a larger stream of income for to make my pension plan. So let me give you a quick, quick example here. Uh, a property, let's say, that is selling for two sixty-five. dollars okay? It generates today $3,000 a month of gross income. Now, you, you have to buy that property as the investor. So let's say you put down 25%. You get the money from assets that you got. Pull it out of your home. Homes are rising up in value. You might have some equity in there. You can get a HELOC loan, pull some money out of there, and some other sources. Uh, so let's say you put down your 25%, which is 66250 That gives you a loan of about 198750 Now go with me on this one, you guys. That loan is going to cost you roughly around $1,200 a month today. Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Now, with the $3,000 a month positive uh, uh, co uh, income, gen uh, gross income you get, you're le you minus your, your expense for buying that property, you have $1,800 a month positive cash flow. Wow, that is huge. That represents $21,600 positive cash flow per year. You know what? you got to stay tuned for more from the Springs Radio Real Estate Show. I'll be right back. I'm going to show you where you get that accurate data to find those properties that are for sale right from the Realtors MLS. We'll be right back with more.